Good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Can someone uh, confirm? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, so welcome to the FIM classes. Uh, so today uh, from this class onwards, uh, I think till uh, early November, we will have these classes. Uh, so before going to the class, I, I like to introduce myself. Uh, I am Sri Dharan, uh, Deputy Director, Central Bank of Sri Lanka. I am attached to the Micro Prudence Surveillance Department, which is uh, sort of overall in charge for the monitoring uh, the financial system in a macro prudential way. So that's my, uh, that's all about my uh, myself. And uh, with that understanding or with that uh, introduction, if I move into the topic or today's subject of financial institution management, which covers several topics. Uh, the first one is incorporation of companies uh, or particularly the finance institutions and then about the licensing of financial institutions, uh, several uh, regulators granting the license to the uh, different type of financial institutions. And so we will discuss about that under this section. And after that, we will discuss about the shareholders and their rights uh, in a company. Then the group and organization structure under this section, we will discuss about something called uh, conglomerate, financial conglomerate and how this structured and all, all sort of information and then the expansion strategies of financial institution or financial groups and then financial reporting and analysis. Uh, this is also one of the topic uh, we will cover uh, how this uh, finance institution has to make the reporting, financial reporting and analysis part and then audit. Uh, uh, subsequent to the audit and then we will move to the complaints uh, which we you will heard about that every if you are work in the banks and financial institutions you may heard about the complaints function so uh, that we will discuss about the complaints function and the role of the uh, chief complaints officer and etc uh, then we will move to the corporate governance under the corporate governance uh, which is one of the uh, emerging and very vast topic so, and in the exam point of view, also one of the important topic, uh, corporate governance. So, we will discuss about it. Then, the corporate strategic planning, uh, we will talk about that. Uh, it's, it's about the strategic planning of the finance institution, how it's, uh, uh, how it's, uh, the companies are dealing with the strategic planning and how they help to the finance institution in such a way. And then, we will move to the financial fraud, as uh, some internationally, uh, internationally famous fraud about Enron case and all we will discuss under this case under this topic and then risk management and liquidation so these are the uh, topics we will discuss in in, in a, around 22 class sessions so uh, that is all about the uh, subject coverage and if we, if i talk about the exam exam as you know because of what I'm always telling to the students there are uh, for the study the, why you are coming to study this uh, topic or subject there are two main objective first objective get the knowledge about the uh, particular area and the second one is the and most important one is pass the exam so whenever to, uh, whenever studying a topic we will think about the this we will always think about these two topics these two objectives First, we will see whether we, we, are, we are getting or we are gaining some new knowledge by discussing that particular topic. And then we will uh, think about what would be the potential question or possible question uh, with, with related to those topics and whether we can able to answer those questions. So those two objectives will be fulfilled by this lecture series. So, uh, if I uh, if I t tell you about the second or related to some uh, something related to second objective, which is about the exam. Exam, uh, you all can see that the first question is uh, sort of uh, ten sub questions, uh, which is a compulsory. So every questions each uh, subsection having the two marks. 
so examiner or um, examiner will expect you all to give a short answer for that uh, 10 questions then uh, uh, then from 2 to 7 i think 2 to 7 or 8 8 questions there are seven other questions which are structural uh, type of questions so every question will have four subsections so you will have to answer that or uh, you have to select the four questions out of the uh, balance seven questions so altogether five questions you have to answer each questions will have uh, 20 marks so first questions are compulsory other four questions you will have to select from the seven question you will have to select four questions that is about the uh, this exam paper of this topic and uh, that's all about the introduction of this uh, finance institution management and by the way i like to say some uh, housekeeping or I, I like to make some housekeeping announcement uh, we are actually this is sort of i am expecting you all to interact uh, interact with me at any time you can ask the question at any time then i will answer if i know the answer otherwise what we'll do i will prepare the answer and next class i will so give the answer for you all but most of the answers i could be able to answer to you all then and there so you can unmute your uh, microphone and can ask the question or you can uh, send your comments or questions through the chat box then i, I may at time to time i'll check the uh, chat box and i can uh, give the answer uh, whenever you will ask the questions so that's all about the uh, initial introduction about this topic so do you will have any anything to ask from me before going to the uh, today's topic do you all want to ask anything okay then i am going to the i am moving to the uh, today's topic the first as i say uh, we are we will uh, discuss something about introduction to the financial institution today's topic we will cover the two or uh, two subtopics one first one is introduction to the financial institution second one is the registration part of the finance institution so before that we will enter uh, we will enter into the introduction to the financial institution before going to the finance institution, we have to discuss about the financial system. What is financial system? The financial system in Sri Lanka comprise four components. The first one is financial institutions. The second one is financial markets. The third one is financial infrastructure facilities. The fourth one is financial regulators. Not only in Sri Lanka, in any country, if we see the financial system, these four elements will be there. Actually, in some theoretical text, uh, they may mention the three people because financial regulators also, they may include into the financial institutions. But generally, you can say that financial system has the four components financial institution financial market financial infrastructure and financial regulators so what is financial institutions the financial institution generally help to the people or general public to transact their money based transactions For example, I can, I can, uh, how the financial system or financial institution help to the public, we can just get an, a general idea in early morning. In the early morning, when we are, we wanted to buy some paper, uh, one paper or some bread or milk or anything, we are going to the shop. Then, when we are going to the shop, then we are, we are, they will give the shop owner, give the, uh, <coughs> some uh, bread or milk or anything to us. And then we have to give the money. So that transaction start with the money. So to, to do that uh, transaction, actually financial institution has to help 
to uh, the 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 shopona has the trust on that the, the money he this person or general person general public giving to that owner and then 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 shopona will get the money from all sort of customers and then he will deposit in the bank then and that play, uh, place the financial institution come into the play so then he deposit into the the, the money here the shop owner deposit the money into the uh, bank and then when the, uh, he is making the wholesale purchase he will give the checks so for that checks clearing purpose then financial institution and financial infrastructure coming to the place because the check clearance has to come for example he may uh, give the hnb check international bank check but that uh, wholesale owner may have the account with the bank of slow so that uh, the transaction has to happen and check clearance has to happen so there is a financial infrastructure facilities get involved then in that way in daily each and every people's daily transaction this financial system facilitate them to do their transactions and particularly the financial institutions so in the financial institution we are uh, we can give an example licensed commercial banks and licensed specialized bank if you will work in the finance institution we you will may know about the the difference between the licensed commercial bank and licensed specialized bank but just for a clarity i am uh, 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 reiterating that the commercial bank which can run with the uh, current account which has the uh, current account facilities but a uh, licensed specialized bank which may not have the current account facilities for the licensed commercial bank we can give the example bank of sloan people's bank hnb commercial and all for the licensed specialized bank we can give nsp hdfc uh, the, those type of banks and then uh, other other finance institution licensed finance companies lfcs the licensed finance companies of course they are they 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 can't have a current account but they are their operation is sort of not in the bank level but in the you will know about the licensed finance companies and uh, uh, this uh, there are several example lolc uh, cdb and all then like specialized leasing companies which is specialized for the leasing business what is the difference between the licensed finance companies and uh, specialized leasing companies is anybody yeah there's a there's a question uh, asking that uh, there's a there's one of the student asking that sir are we getting these slides actually you you can get the slides the this uh, ibsl will send to you after this class uh, they will send it to you this class slides okay uh, so can anybody say that what is the difference between the licensed finance companies and specialized leasing company just for an uh, idea you can unmute the uh, microphone and uh, if the answer you can type okay i am telling that the licensed finance companies they can mobilize the deposit from the general public but specialized leasing companies they can't mobilize the deposit from the general public that is the different from the licensed finance companies and licensed specialized companies which we will discuss very detailed manner in the subsequent classes then primary dealers you all know that this primary dealers for government securities there are companies which are which which function as a primary dealer so they have the Uh, sort of uh, authority, or they have the, they have, they can buy the uh, treasury bill and treasury bonds at the primary auctions. So uh, there are companies, the primary dealer companies, and insurance companies. Of course, all of you all know about it, and rural bank, which is a cooperative rural bank, and then stock brokers and pension and provident funds. 
the pension and provident funds we can say the epf etf etc and securities market intermediaries then unit trust trust and corporate uh, the credit cooperative societies all these institution can be categorized under financial institutions so we are going to discuss about we are in this uh, our, our subject we are going to focus about this these finance the, the functions of these financial institutions so i i i i already told you the financial system has the four component first one is a finance institution the second one is financial markets the financial market of course you all know about it i mean me we know about it foreign exchange market money market stock market and government securities market so those market can be called as a financial market this is also considered as a part of the financial system and then the financial infrastructure the financial infrastructures are the legal framework related to the financial system and payment and settlement system payment and settlement system of course which uh, which help to make the transaction uh, as i explained to you all that if it is a check transaction to uh, check clearing uh, the, the 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 institution which provide the check clearing facilities coming under the payment and settlement infrastructure then finally financial regulators how many financial regulators are in sri lanka generally three there are three financial regulators uh, the main financial regulators but we can say that for fourth one also there is a fourth one also but generally three main financial regulators are in sri lanka who are they the central bank of sri lanka the finance financial institution they are the people uh regulating and supervising the li licensed commercial bank licensed specialized bank finance companies leasing companies etc and the second one is securities and exchange commission scc <coughs> this is uh this is the, the scc regulate the equity market and stock break stock brokers uh, and uh, basically capital market related uh, institution they are reg regulating the institution related to the capital market the third one is insurance regulatory commission the insurance regulatory commissions of course monitoring the uh, insurance companies generally the life insurance as well as general insurance company so if 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 there's a question in the exam uh, what is the uh, component what are the components of the financial system then you will have to say there are four components in the financial system the first one is financial institution second one is financial market third one is financial infrastructure fourth one is financial regulators by the way i just mentioned you all that even though there are three financial regulators there is another one more financial regulators in sri lanka who is that i have mentioned you all that there are three main financial regulator in sri lanka but there is another additional one additional regulators he is also can be that particular institution also can be considered as a financial regulators that is cooperative development committee the commissioner of cooperative development department they are the people regulating the rural banks and credit cooperative societies so uh, actually if 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 anybody generally ask the uh, financial regulators you can say these three names but you have to keep it in for your knowledge purpose this cooperative uh, commissioner of cooperative development department also can be considered as a financial regulators so generally it's a four you will have any doubt on this first slide before going to the second slide we will clear the first slide you will have any doubt you can ask the question at any time
okay then i'll move into the uh, the finance institution some uh, in the detail manner the finance institution are vital to the economy because they are making financial transaction possible as i mentioned in my uh, the first example when a person wanted to buy something or oh, the, the the shop owner wanted to keep their my savings into uh, say in the safe manner or they wanted to use that money for the any uh, wholesale purchase or if they any person wanted to uh, get a loan or they wanted to save their money all sort of financial transaction these financial institutions are much more important and finance institution are intermediaries that facilitate money flow throughout an economy among customers business enterprises and government so uh, the in the, the finance institution play a role of intermediary function <coughs> so what they are doing is they are getting money from the Uh, the surplus people the money surplus people they are they are getting money from the money surplus people and giving to the uh, giving to the the people those who want the money for business purpose or investment purpose so they are doing sort of intermediary functions getting the money from the surplus unit and giving the money to the shortage unit so when they are getting the money from the surplus unit they are getting by way of deposits or savings saving account through the saving account or through the fixed deposit account they are getting money from the surplus unit and they are giving money to the uh, shortage uh, unit or those who want wants the money for several purpose they are giving in a way to loans and advances so they are the finance institution uh, play a role of uh, intermediary role and third one is transfer of the fund from the economic agents with excess fund to economic agents in need of funds that's actually that's what uh, it, it's related to the second one they are getting from the excess fund surplus unit to deficit unit in other word financial institution uh, effective allocation of scare resources actually uh, they are they are involving uh, on allocating the resources uh, from the excess unit to deficit unit sort of resource allocation function and the other one is the uh, the, the which is related to the the recent scenarios the lockdown uh, due to the covid-19 pandemic we are everybody uh, feel about the importance of the financial institutions particularly for the uh, cash withdrawals and uh, the atm inform uh, atm uh, usage of the atm as well as importance of online transaction everything will be clearly demonstrated uh, during this uh, covid-19 pandemic closed downs so as i mentioned the central bank uh, financial intermediaries financial service providers and uh, central bank etc can be considered as a financial institutions any doubt before going to the next section come on students uh, actually i am expecting the questions from you all then only the class will be more interactions and don't think about that i am asking with a uh, very silly question so uh, uh, and don't hesitate that just ask whatever question you are having then it is easy to clarify yourself as well as to other people as well because as a, as a teacher point of view i am making the uh, giving some ideas so as a student point of view you all may have some doubt so it is better uh, you if when, when a person asking the question that will be beneficial to both parties any questions you all wanted to ask
Okay, then I'm going to the next part. The key function of the financial institution. There are four key functions are um, carried out by the financial institutions. First one is size transformation. The varied size of funds requirements and fund raises are matches to satisfy individual requirement. You all may think about it. Why this financial institution has to have intermediary role? They, uh, instead of that, uh, uh, the, <coughs> the money surplus unit or surplus unit can directly give the money to the deficit unit. Then there is no necessity to have a financial institution as an intermediary. Is it possible? No, exactly. It is not possible. Why? Because the first one is size. Because surplus unit person may have uh, 2 million as a surplus. X, uh, the, uh, the person X, he is having the 2 million as an excess cash. But the, the deficit unit person, for example, uh, A, he wants or he needs only 1 million rupees. Or oh, he needs 3 million rupees. We will, for more clarity, we will uh, take about the example. The need unit or deficit unit person A need 3 million rupees. So there will not be a size transformation. So the intermediary, as a, as a intermediary, the financial institution taking from the XY set and all the surplus people and giving much to the size, uh, matching to the uh, size of the needy people and give the money to the uh, redistributing among the deficit unit. So size transformation is the one of the key function of financial institutions. And the second one is maturity transformation. The maturity transformation, again, if you see an example, uh, the X, the surplus unit person X, he has the surplus money of 2 million rupees, but he need the money within one year period. In a one year period, he need this money for some other purpose. But in the needy, uh, the deficit unit person A need the 3 million rupees, but he need for five years period. So there is no, there is a maturity mismatch. The surplus unit has only one year money, but <coughs> the deficit unit person need five years money. So the as a five intermediary institution, the financial institution are doing this maturity transformation among the surplus unit and deficit unit. The fourth one is asset liability transformation. The financial institution provide financial instruments that are more attractive to both fund providers and users. Because when a person, uh, even though when, when, a, when a person has excess money, he prefer to give it to the financial institution and get the, the fixed deposit certificate rather than giving to the, uh, the deficit person directly and get it. So they are doing the asset liability transformation that is other key role of the finance institution. And the risk transformation, of course, which we will discuss detail on in the risk management section. Finance institution minimize the liquidity and price risk through their ability to diversify some of their risk. So actually the liquidity risk, uh, of course, it's, it's connected to the maturity transformation. So for example, there's an excess person, excess uh, surplus unit person, he has some uh, 1 million rupee or 2 million as excess fund and he initially decided, okay, I need this money in the one year period. But suddenly he needs some money in the six month period. So there's a liquidity. So he needs suddenly. So these finance institutions are doing, um, giving with some penalty or something. They are giving back, providing the liquidity to the uh, surplus person. So these are the four key functions. Uh, carried out by the finance institution. First one is size transformation. Second one is maturity transformation. Third one is asset liability transformation. Fourth one is risk transformations. 
any doubt you will want it any question you will want it ask uh there's a question uh, sir related to the previous slide what are the economic agents uh, are they same as the buyers and uh, sellers actually uh, can can you ask the questions uh, again i couldn't understand uh, the previous slides what are the economic agents are they yeah Can you you said, uh, you said uh, transfer transfer funds from uh, uh, economic agents uh, that means uh, from uh, surplus units and deficit units were you meaning the uh, buyers and sellers or are they described any differently the economic agents precisely that word because i'm new to this subject okay okay so you are asking about the when when a, when a bank if we, if we if we go to the the previous slide the when a bank runs of the I, i i mean that it's a it's a uh, rather than buyers and sellers it's about the uh, sort of a surplus unit and uh, deficit unit so uh, they are, they may be the buyer uh, they are we, we can't call these as a exactly the buyers and sellers actually these are uh, we can call as a customers in the both side is a customers and financial institution coming under the middle so they are getting we can't say that uh, these excess unit as uh, uh, sellers or uh, uh, the needy unit as uh, or deficit unit as uh, buyers actually both sides are customers rather than uh, buying and selling they are transaction they, they are having the uh, they, um, principal and agent relations rather than buyers and sellers uh, Understand? Is okay? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Then, uh, then uh, okay. We will move to the next question. Uh, the next slide. That importance of the financial institutions. The first one is reduction of transaction cost. Actually, when a surplus unit and uh, the need unit, deficit unit are directly involved, the transaction cost may be. higher so uh, the economic of scale will be created at uh, when the financial institutions are get involved for example uh, this <coughs> when a uh, the, when a bank or finance institution getting money from the all over the country from surplus units and then when they are pooling that money and giving to the uh, deficit unit people then there is a economic of scale will be uh, get effective so they are will they are the buyers <coughs> the needy people or deficit unit people get the relatively get the cheap rate as well as the surplus people can give a relatively i, I am uh, just keep it in mind the word the relatively relatively a reasonable uh, income for their deposits and the provision of liquidity of course i have already mentioned you all that the finance institutions are giving more liquidity to the uh, uh, creating more liquidity in the system so that is one the first importance and second one is risk sharing the risk sharing of course the when when a bank is get involved and for example uh, uh, a person uh, the bank uh, getting the money from a uh, deficit uh, the, the surplus unit and granting the uh, loans and advances to 100 person 100 people different corporate customers they are granting loans and advances if one or two are not grant uh, not repaid that money to the bank but then the bank what nothing won't happen to the bank because the risk getting charged because they are giving grant to 90 100 people with a sort of margin and 98 people are repaying with a with a timely repaying with that margin so even though one or two customers not repaying that that risk can be charged with other people so the risk charging mechanism is uh, taking place and portfolio diversification and asset transformation is under that risk charge and the third one is address the asymmetric information 
so uh, the adverse selection and moral hazard for example address that uh, asymmetrical information in the sense if a, in, when a financial institutions are uh, functioning for specialization of this financial transaction they may have good selection criteria say so they will avoid the adverse selection criteria for example when they are granting the loans and advances they may have very sophisticated systems so they can uh, they can uh, avoid or adverse selections and they the moral hazard means they they can avoid the since they are following the good risk management system they can avoid the moral hazards or granting some ex or taking excess risk uh, could be avoided by this finance institution so these are the uh, importance of finance institution we can say under three topics and management of the finance institution the finance institutions are distinct from the different from other business entities this is very important uh, aspect you will have to understand because in the exams there are the, uh, several questions are related to this and this is one of the key principle in this topic the finance institution management are different from other business entities what is the main difference from the uh, finance institution uh, uh, and uh, uh, the main difference from uh, between a finance institution and other production company or export company or, or supermarket or any other institution what is the main difference between these two the finance institution and other business entities can anybody answer generally the there, there is a main difference if you take if you take a bank for example if you take a commercial bank as a one institution and if you take a um, jkh as a one institution or kaylis as a one institution okay so what is the difference between the main different i am expecting the main different between the banking business and a conglomerate or financial sorry other production based business what is the main difference can anybody lending sorry lending yeah lending is one uh, one uh, they are they are doing the lending that is their type of business but the based on the structure based on the structure you can understand that the financial institutions are comparably running with depositors money they are having less capital and using other people money and run the business but if it is other financial institution the capital will be the more uh, or higher component so that is the main difference between the the financial institution and other business entities that is one of the reason why the central bank or other regulators are having very stringent rules and regulations for the this finance institution particularly banks and finance companies because they are running with other people depositors money for example if you see general in the general pattern yeah in their liability nearly 10% or 12% of the liability will be the equity and nearly 70% of their liability will be deposits the deposit mobilized from the general public but if we, if you see a production company or export based company in their the capital the equity will be more than 50% or nearly 40 50 60% level and the the borrowing money the debt uh, debt instrument or debt money will be very small a portion so here the because the, the in, in the production company they are running with their own money so if something happened the equity holders or owners will hit or they had to bear the losses but if it is in the financial institution since they are running with the depositors money or general public money 
if something happened to the financial institution, especially deposit taking financial institution, then general public has to take the bear the losses. In the sense, uh, the bank may, if, if the bank doesn't, if bank does not able to repay the money, then general public has, uh, will lose their money. So that is the main difference. If, if somebody asks that, what is the main difference? This is the main difference. The uh, financial institution running with the depositors money, but other business running with the owner's money, the equity holders money. So the finance institution should have more stringent rules and regulations and supervisory requirement and other business. Uh, that's, that is the one of the reason you'll see if, if I wanted to open a production company or a supermarket or any companies, um, there is no such a, uh, rules or such a licensing process. But if I wanted to open a bank or if I wanted to open a, a finance company, there are stringent rules and stringent, stringent licensing process. I can anybody can't easily open the finance institute, especially banks and finance companies, because uh, anybody can just easily open the finance companies or bank and get the general public money, and they can just uh, ultimately if something happened that will affect the general public. So that is the main difference between the finance companies and other businesses. Understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Then they have a wide macroeconomic impact and public impact due to their specific role. What is the microeconomic impact through the finance, finance institution? For example, we will take a bank X. I don't use the name. I'll, I'll call as a bank X, which is the largest bank in Sri Lanka. When it get failed, so it's going to the bank bankruptcy. What would be the impact from that event compared to a production company failed or go for the go into the bankruptcy? When a production company go into the bankruptcy or a supermarket chain go into the bankruptcy, there is no much impact to the macro economy or general public. But if a bank go into the uh, bankruptcy situation, or if a bank fail, if a bank got into a crisis, that will affect the entire microeconomic condition of the country and economy. Another thing is, when, a, for example, when a production company get fail, it won't affect other companies or rarely affect other companies. But if a bank get failed or going to the bankruptcy, that may affect the other five banks as well because through the contagion effect and general public also will lose their confidence on the financial system or banking system. Then everybody try to withdraw their money from the banking system if, when a bank get failed. So that will create more macroeconomic impact. In general, actually, there's a book called Survey of Finances System written by uh, Samarasri. Where he said that the India finance, the main role of the finance system is create a confidence on money. See, the people are not having the confidence on the money or the currency. What will happen to the economy? Then nothing was, it, it, it will be a sort of, uh, it will be a disaster. For example, you are giving the thousand rupees notes to buy something. If the so shop owner says, I can't accept this thousand rupees, uh, uh, like that, he, he has said a sort of hesitation, then end the economy will get co collapse. Likewise, that's the thing, the, the creating the confidence on the money is and and if if a bank getting fail or finance the banking system getting fail, that will have more uh, Im the, Im impact on the macroeconomic condition that will lead to the financial crisis. That will lead to the crisis of India economy. But 
uh, in other finance, uh, other, other production company, it won't happen. And other one is preserving customer confidence is the key to success and sustainability. This is also one of the other, other important in the management of finance institution. The customer confidence is a key in the finance institution. I think these slides you have to, uh, this is one of the important slides because there are questions to this. Uh, if you see the past paper, there are questions. They are asking compared to the other five business entities, why finance institution should be more uh, vigilant also should be more 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 should, should be subject to more regulations or supervisions then you have to say these four points the preserving customer confidence is key to success and sustainability for example i can take a one example uh, i i want to buy a uh, okay one packet anchor or one packet uh, milk powder then I just go to the supermarket and I give the money. And if the person, if the supermarket uh, tell I give the uh, anger packet to me, then my relationship is sort of over because I gave the money and they gave the good, uh, goods for me and it's have the uh, expired date and all are okay. Then the relationship is over. But in, in case of bank, if I wanted to deposit a thousand rupees or hundred thousand rupees in a bank, I wanted to have it. I, I, I must have the confidence on the bank where the bank or for example, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, depositing the hundred thousand for a bank for a one year deposit. I should have the confidence on the bank that bank will continually function for a one year period and give back this money to me. If I have that such a confidence on that particular finance institution only, I will deposit my money into a particular bank. Otherwise, customer won't deposit. So compared to uh, other businesses or supermarket or buying uh, goods, this banking business should have the customer confidence. And at any point, if a customer uh, thinking that or feeling that the bank will not survive for a long time or it's going to crash then uh, the everybody started to withdraw their money then that itself lead to a crisis situation so preserving customer confidence is a key to success and sustainability in the finance institutions hence finance institution require specific management approach compared to other business entities. I think this is all about the introduction to the finance institution. You will have any questions you can ask. Any, 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 anything you all wanted to ask? Okay, then I'll uh, move into the next section, which is about the incorporation of companies. Actually, uh, in the rest of today's class and most probably in the next class, we will discuss about the incorporation of the companies and various requirements, the legal requirement and all. So you will have to have a sort of understanding. This will give some uh, extra knowledge to you all to get an uh, idea about how the companies are get registered and all. Then actually today's class it will cover and the next class we will see about the licensing procedures. So when, when a, if a person wanted to open a bank, uh, what is the licensing uh, requirement and what are the requirements they have to follow and all sort of things. If it, uh, the same, we will uh, discuss about the finance companies and specialized leasing companies or stock brokers, etc. So before going to that, we will see something about the incorporation of a company, which is this section purely based on the legal aspect or company law. Uh, the majority of the financial institutions are incorporated under 
Companies Act, number seven of two thousand seven. So generally, any finance institution here in this point onwards, when I am talking about the finance institution, I am talking mainly about the banks and finance companies. So simply say a deposit taking financial institution. So the you will understand the wording called deposit taking finance institution. A deposit taking finance institution means any finance institution which can mobilize the deposit from the general public. For example, banks, licensed commercial bank, licensed specialized bank, the licensed finance companies. These three institution can be. Called as a deposit taking finance institution mainly, and there are exceptions. Uh, other other <laughs> institution also involved in rural bank and thrift societies can be collect the money from the general public. Samuti Bank, these are some semi formal institutions. So generally, when I am talking about the finance institution, this point onwards, mainly I am talking about the banks and finance companies. Just keep it under the mind. So majority of the financial institution are incorporated under Companies Act Number Seven of Two Thousand Seven. Once incorporated, it become a corporate body. So here I use the word the majority of the financial institutions are incorporated under Companies Act. So it is. Uh, it is understandable so there are some institution which are not incorporated under companies act what are those financial institution can you all give an example one or two one or two financial institutions which are not incorporated under companies act special act what are those financial institution any any idea Special leasing companies. Uh, no, specialized leasing companies also uh, incorporated under uh, the Companies Act. You all can think about uh, some government institutions, financial institutions. I I gave a clue clue to you all. Any guess? Cooperative banks, of course, we can tell because that is under the uh, Cooperative Act. Uh, especially, we can say the Bankers Loan and People's Bank, which are incorporated under the Special Act, People's Bank Act and Bankers Loan Act, and even the NSP NSP Act. Those are the some exemption you all can say. Other than that, the majority of the financial institutions are incorporated under Companies Act. It may be. Commercial bank, H and B, any any bank, Carcass Bank, or any 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 banks you can say which are uh, incorporated under uh, Companies Act. So once incorporated, it's become the corporate body, and a corporate body has the capacity to carry on the undertake any business or activity, do any act, or enter into any transaction. This is in the in the Companies Act. So a company or corporate become the artificial person, okay? As a as a as a corporate body, uh, he can or that that institution can can enter into any sort of business which a person has a right to enter. So uh, which can take into any business activity or they can mobilize the they can. Uh, Act any transaction. They can get involved in any transaction. They can borrow the money. All sort of they are they are giving the way. If an institution uh, incorporated under Companies Act, then they can do uh, any sort of business activities. And a corporate body is providing all rights and powers and privileges necessary for its purpose. So in the under the Companies Act number seven of two thousand seven, the Powers are given to the corporate body to uh, 
uh, act a, uh, to act or to engage with any business transactions. Okay, I am asking a question from you. You all have any questions, or otherwise I will answer questions. For example, a, a company or a, a, a institution incorporated under Companies Act Number no. Seven of Two Thousand Seven. An institution called ABC Institution. ABC Institution incorporated under Companies Act Number no. Seven of Two Thousand Seven. Okay. Here in this slide, we say that they they can undertake any sort of business. Okay. So I am asking a question from you all whether they can mobilize the deposit from the customers and the, or not. Yes, yeah, students, if you are asking a question, please uh, you can uh, unmute the uh, microphone, otherwise, keep it in my mute phone. Did you get the uh, question? Uh, uh, institution which is un incorporated under the Companies Act number no. 7 of 2007, under these circumstances. That particular com institution or company can mobilize the deposit or not. What is the uh, answer? Yes or no? There are there are fifty fifty chance. No. Yes. No. Because they have they, even though they they can involve with any business transaction, but if they wanted to get involved with the financial transaction, it means mobilize the deposit from the surplus unit, then they have to get the special license from the regulators, particularly the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Other than that, they can't get mobilize the deposit. Okay, so you have to clearly understand a institution or a, a, a institution incorporated in the company side, which will give a general power to do any business, but a particular business of deposit mobilizing, if they wanted to involve a particular business of deposit mobilizing, then they have to get a particular license from the uh, or banking license or LFC license from the uh, central bank. Okay. Then the companies. There are three types of companies. One, these are the, uh, I think the act matters. These are very direct meaning. Uh, need not too much uh, explanation. Uh, so I'm, I'm just uh, reading it. The limited company. There are three type of companies. One is limited company. Other one is unlimited company. Other one is limited uh, company limited by guarantees. Generally, most of the companies are registered under the limited liability company. So issues, shares and shareholders have the liability to contribute to the assets of the company if they specified in the article of association. So the limited companies can issue the shares and raise the uh, equity or raise the shareholders of the funds and they are they they have the liability to contribute to the assets of the company if that is specified in the article of association an unlimited company they can issue the shares and shareholders have the unlimited liability to contribute to the assets of the company under the article of association for example, so what is the difference between the limited company and unlimited company? If the limited company fail, <coughs> the shareholders has the liability to contribute until they are the until the value of their shareholding value. But if it is an unlimited company, there is no uh, the shareholders has the unlimited liability to contribute to their debt losses. And company limited by guarantee, no issue of charge, and the members undertake to contribute to the assets of the company in the event put into the liquidation 
in an amount specified in the article of association actually under this category there is no charge there is no charge of course these are the companies uh, generally this uh, like uh, social uh, social service motivated companies and no, uh, non profit companies are uh, registered under this section company limited by guarantee where there is no charge but my members undertake to contribute a certain level of losses or the assets of the company in the event put into the liquidation if company go for a liquidation they will uh, they will undertake uh, by the certain amount of the guaranteed amount so if the company getting losses they the shareholders has to get into that uh, liability so these are the three type of company limited company unlimited company and company limited by guarantee and the limited company the main <coughs> segregation is the private company the limited company can be uh, segregated into uh, two section the private company and public company publicly listed company the private company the article of association include that the one of the it's is is a uh condition is prohibit from offering shares or other securities of the company to the public if it is a private company they can they can't offer the shares to the general public what they can do is they can just uh, sell their shares to the uh, they are they are known people or already already targeted people known people and all they can generally issue to the general public they can issue the charge to general public that is first thing and the second one is limit the shareholders to 50 excluding the shareholders who are employees of the company who become the shareholders while they were employed and continue even after cessation of employment the excluding those two category the maximum shareholders should be 50 a private company by anonymous resolution of its shareholders can dispense with the requirement to maintain its interest register actually that's a, there are several register has to be maintained by the uh, uh, companies and especially the private companies as well so one of the, the, the one of the register is called interest register so <coughs> if a private company by anonymous resolution of its shareholders can dispense with the requirement of maintaining interest register so interest register in the sense uh, it, it it explaining that okay uh, who are the shareholders having uh, how much of interest in that company so by a anonymous resolution then they can Uh, they can they can avoid to maintaining the interest fees so it means if a one shareholder is wanted to maintain then that particular private company has to maintain and the other one is however that that that's what it's, it's mentioned here however if any shareholder give the notice in written to, in the in contrary the register should be maintained we are all the shareholders anonymously anonymously agree to any action taken or to be taken such action is considered as valid validity authorized and final one if a article of association is altered in a way that company no longer comply or fail to comply with the statutory requirement of private company it ceases to be a private company requirement on interest register and anonymous agreement of shareholders cease to apply and deem to have changed its name appropriately what does it mean for example if an article of association first they are incorporating as a private company and when they are running into the private company and then at one point the article of association is altered in a way that that company will not be no longer private company for example they may say okay the company will be we 
become the publicly listed company, PLC, public company. In that case, if they altered in that way, then what they have to do is, they, that company cannot be considered as a private company. The second one is, if it is the private company only, they, they can owe it to maintain the interest register. But then if it is, if it is become the public company or if they, if they uh, altered the article, the article of association to withdraw from the private company condition, then they have to maintain the interest register. And finally, they say that the deemed to have changed its name appropriately. Actually, what is the requirement of a private company? What is the name requirement of the private company? Does anybody know that? When a private company, uh, uh, when, they, when, they, when they decide their name or when they uh, publish their name, there's a, there's a requirement under the Companies Act, generally. But what, what is the requirement if it is a private company? Can you give me an example for a private company? It should say limited. Yeah, which is which has to say limited. And other than that, they have to particularly within the bracket, they have to put PVT, private. So that private. Sorry. Private limited, yeah. Yeah, private limited. If it is a private company, they have to mention as a PVT in the within the bracket. So if, if once they once they leave from the private company condition, the the, the status, then they have to change the uh, their name. So they they can't mention no longer they can they can mention the PVT within the uh, name within the bracket. So they have to uh, they have to move to the PLC. Generally, other companies has to go for uh, the limited. Oh, no, sorry, the PLC, if it is a listed company. So, what's the import? Yeah, can I kindly know what's the importance of the interest registry? Yeah, interest registry generally, the, the, we will discuss about the interest registry also the, in the subsequent section. Actually, which is uh, which is uh, maintaining that, but how many, uh, how much of interest they are having each and every shareholders? So, which will give an idea about the, uh, the, the, the shareholder ownership and all in the, in the, in the, in the interest register. So, by, by maintaining that everybody, the general public has the access or the later stakeholders has the access to know that, okay, other person have how much of interest in that particular company. But then that is, that is important for all the shareholders to get to know each and everybody's interest. But in a private company, of course, which is sort of very close relation people, close relations in the sense, uh, uh, closely related people are get involved in a uh, private company. So we are by uh, by anonymous uh, agreement, they can <coughs> they can avoid to maintain that interest register. So, uh, but in the public company, in, in, the, in the other companies, a public company, they have to maintain the interest register. It is everybody because they can offer the, uh, they can offer the charge to the general public. So, the public can see that uh, uh, the interest register, okay, who are the people are having, the, how much of the shareholders and who is the shareholders and all information. And we will discuss, I think, we will discuss this interest register and what are the components including in the interest register and later on in the slides. Are you satisfied with the answer or do you want it? Okay. Yes, 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 sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Then we will go to the, the next category companies limited by guarantee as i say uh, already this there's another category called the companies limited by guarantee this is generally non profit making companies are incorporated generally the underline the word the generally 
non profit co uh, corporation the companies are uh, <coughs> registered under this company is limited by the guarantee so where the two or more persons can apply to form a company limited by guarantee and the prescribed from sign prescribed for uh, form signed by each initial member should be submitted for incorporation along with the article of association consent from each initial director to act as a director consent from the uh, consent from the initial secretary to act as a secretary so these are the th the three main documents they have to give when they are registering another thing is article of association shall state the objective of the companies and amount each member undertake to contribute to the assets of the company in the event of liquidation i have already explained to you that uh, of course there is no issuance of shares in the limited uh, the company is limited by guarantee but the every shareholders by a guaranteed amount they have to contribute to the company at the event of liquidation so the article of association has to mention particularly that the amount each member has to undertake to contribute to the assets of the company in the event of liquidation for example uh, a company they say that okay the at the time of liquidation if necessary each member has to contribute 100000 to the particular company if it is so then article of association has to may uh, the mention that amount each member how much has to mention any any anything you all want to ask this and this is i think uh, very straightforward okay there is other company called offshore companies a company a body corporate incorporated under the law of any foreign country is called offshore company generally a company they they function in sri lanka but they are incorporated under the law of any foreign country is called offshore company a apl application for registration should be accompany several documents in case of offshore company the first one is a certificate copy of the charter state status or other relevant document has to be submitted to the registrar of company and list of directors or those managing the company with detail these are the i think the legal act matters these are uh, as it is that is that and names and address of one or more person who are resident in and are citizens of sri lanka who is authorized to represent the company this is you are to keep it in mind if it is the offshore company the company which is uh, incorporated under any law of the foreign country but they are going to function in sri lanka at that time the name and address of a one or more, more person who are resident and in in and are citizen of sri lanka who is authorized to represent the company that the name has to be given to the registrar and statement containing full address of the registered or principal office in the country of incorporation and the office in sri lanka and a certificate copy of the incorporation order has to be submitted not only that and uh, there are some other uh, condition also with related to the offshore company they can carry on the any business outside sri lanka but not entitled to carry on any business within sri lanka actually they may have the office but they 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 can carry the business in the uh, any other country for some tax purposes and all they can they are keeping this offshore company a certificate of registration will be issued having regard to national interest or in the interest of national economy to, to carry out the business outside sri lanka we are company pay the prescribed fee and produce a certificate form of a bank that money required to meet expenses of the company has been deposited in the company's email bank and exemption from the complying with the other provision of the company act 
each calendar year the company should be produced uh, proof of the prescribed payment and the bank certificate on meet expenses by 31st january actually you all may ask that why uh, they can't uh, carry on the business in sri lanka by they incorporate in foreign uh, companies why they are just uh, keeping the office here of course they are for some tax purposes and all they are a sort of a way of uh, this uh, this type of offshore companies and there is other company called overseas companies there are the company or body incorporate incorporated outside sri lanka that established a place of business within sri lanka which is called overseas company so there may be possible questions actually uh, there are rare to ask the question in sections and uh, that but there are possible uh, uh, possible even the uh, question uh, under the question one what is the difference between the offshore company and uh, overseas company then you all may have to uh, give the uh, very brief uh, explanation what is the offshore and what is the overseas company the offshore company they can uh, <coughs> incorporated outside sri lanka and they can have the office in sri lanka but they can't run the any businesses in sri lanka but overseas companies of course a company they are incorporated outside sri lanka that establish a place of business within sri lanka which is called overseas company and in a overseas company it should within one month of establishment in sri lanka deliver to a registrar general of company the following document for the purpose of registration the first one is a certificate copy of the charter st statutes or memorandum and article or other relevant document in english a list of directors with particulars and name and address of the one or more, more person in sri lanka authorized to receive the document and notices served to the uh, company full address of registered office and principal place of bus business within sri lanka and a recent certificate copy of any document evidencing the incorporation of company uh, that's all about the overseas company any doubt so far you are having or you will want to ask So there's a I have a small question. Uh, yeah. There is a question, sir. Yeah. Hello. Yes, you can ask. Hello. Uh, uh, yes, sir. the question is with yeah with regard to now let's assume uh, uh, a bank like HSBC, which is a foreign bank, uh, they have their branches here in Sri Lanka. Yes. Uh, in that con context, uh, what type of company uh, incorporation should they have here? Yeah, actually, in Sri Lanka, the finance, the banking businesses, in different countries, there are different regulatory models are there applicable. Uh, some companies, if the foreign bank has to have a businesses in, uh, in their particular company, then that particular foreign bank should open, register a company in Sri Lanka or a particular country and has to have a subsidiary of that company and has to run the business. That is, in some countries required that model. So, uh, they can't just open the branch. But in case of Sri Lanka, we don't have such a requirement. So, they can open the business as a branch of the foreign company. As a branch of the foreign cover, the foreign bank, for example, if the if the if the Citibank or Deutsche Bank or HSBC bank, they need not to incorporate another company here as a subsidiary company or any form. They can uh, they can open as a branch of the foreign counterpart and they can run the business. In that case, most of the cases they are under the overseas companies uh, act uh, section. They have to give some sort of uh, re uh, registration in the general of companies but there is no subsidiary form in sri lankan uh, regulatory authority
Yeah, then okay. thank you, sir. Thank you. There's other other question. Offshore companies, if they cannot do any uh, operations, what will be other uh, other function they do uh, if they receive registration approval? Yeah, actually, uh, even the last uh, uh, last class or last class in the sense uh, last semester class also, uh, they have students would ask the questions. Uh, obvious uh, question that uh, if they cannot run the business in the uh, Sri Lanka. Why they are uh, registered as an offshore company? Actually, for some tax benefit purposes uh, and some other uh, diplomatic purposes and all, they are just registering under the offshore company, uh, offshore company sections. But um, still, for example, they they uh, you know you can get a for example uh, if it is a some uh, some car, some countries. They can't import the uh, goods from the uh, directly from the uh, the particular. For example, if it is a North Korea and South Korea, they can't uh, directly export from one company, uh, one country to other country. In that case, what they will do is they will have a office in other 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 country. They will not do any business, but what they will do is they will just route the goods from uh, deliver from the Sri Lanka to uh, the particular country. Likewise, some some other. Purposes and businesses, the, some other purpose, they will have an office in Sri Lanka, but they can't do any businesses in Sri Lanka. Uh, basically, to get this uh, some tax, tax benefit as well. So as, the same, the, yeah. So the same, uh, 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 like you explained, uh, can a Sri Lankan company be uh, incorporated overseas? They yes. Are they don't do any business like uh that is depend on the uh, that country's particular countries but uh, uh, can uh, they uh, be incorporated overseas actually there are sri lankan companies which which have uh, incorporated uh they which have a uh, businesses in uh other countries as well um i can't mention it's not ethical to mention the company name but there are even some financial conglomerates which are having the businesses in uh, even india bangladesh and all so uh, they they just incorporated and they can function but it is depend on they are the requirement of the particular country the bangladesh so particular india uh, the their particular country requirement they will do the registration but the the sri lankan company ha can have a, uh, the other counterpart and the other businesses based on uh, but that is will not come governed by sri lankan companies act uh, that that particular businesses will be covered by that particular countries uh, at the company that they are respecting laws and regulations. You know, there's a thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because even 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 uh, several of our apparel companies are having the branches and uh, business operation, even microfinance business operation side, uh, foreign countries and all. But they are they are principal office or principal companies registered in Sri Lanka. But they are having other other businesses in other countries. But and, uh, in that case, they will uh, do the businesses under their uh, particular rules and regulations of particular country uh, legal frame. Uh, uh, so there is a Bank of Ceylon uh, subsidi subsidiary in London. Does that come under offshore or overseas? No, that will not come under the offshore or overseas. Because uh, uh, actually, uh, that's what I just explained that to you all. Uh, I, I just explained to you all that uh, if in, when the foreign banks are having the branch in other country, there are two regulatory systems. Okay. Uh, one regulatory system, the particular foreign bank has to open a subsidiary in the particular country and has to run the business. That is applicable. That that company that that model is applicable to the Bangalore London branch. Mm -hmm. The Bangalore London branch. Then in the Bangalore open a subsidiary, form a subsidiary company and run the business in the um, uh, London. But the other regulatory model is they need not to form a subsidiary company. They can just open as a branch of the head office. Mm -hmm. uh, that is applicable to Sri Lanka. Uh, this HSBC bank or the city bank and all, they are they are running as a one of the branch of their country. They are the head office and they are running into the in Sri Lanka. So there are two regulatory models. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, then we will move to the other uh, some general uh, uh, general condition for this incorporating a company. The first one is the shareholders should be more than two or more than two. Okay, the shareholder minimum shareholder should be two or more than two. And single shareholder permitted if shares are held by an individual or a body corporate or secretary to the treasury on behalf of the government of Sri Lanka. Okay, so general rule if it is an incorporated company, two people are minimum shareholders, two or more people have to be shareholders, but they said there's an exemption, the single shareholder is permitted where a person or institution or secretary to the treasury holding the charge on behalf of the government of Sri Lanka, in that instance only one shareholder is permitted. Just keep it in mind. So if any person or institution or treasury secretary represent the government of Sri Lanka, then the, that company can open with the, the run with the one single shareholder. Another one is submit the application for the registrar general of uh, company in the prescribed form signed by each of the initial shareholders with the following document when they are incorporating a company they have to uh, they have to submit some uh, document first one is declaration stating that to the best of their knowledge the name of the company is not identical or similar to or that of an existing company. For example, as, as a practical, when you all wanted to register a company, the first job you have to do is, you have to find the name which are not identical to the existing company name. For example, uh, uh, for example, uh, ABC company, then I, ca I, can't, I can't keep, uh, I can't open another company called as ABC company. So there should be a, some unique name, you have some separate other name you have to find. So that is the first thing, you have to search the name. When you wanted to open a company, if you say the company registration people, first they will say, okay, uh, get the name, uh, check the name and whether the name is identical, not identical with the existing company, has to confirm that. After that, then, the article of association of the company signed by each initial shareholders if different from the article of association in the act. So, <coughs> have you understand this second blood point? They say that if the, there's a company's act, there's an article of association. If they, you, if they use something else, some other article of association, some other in the sense, all traded article of association, then each and every share, initial shareholder has to be signed and concern from each director to act as a director. Initial director has to be given their consent. We are there, we are ready to act as a director and consent from the initial secretary to act as a secretary. These are some general conditions, the document they have to submit. And the third one, other point is upon receiving a duly completed application in prescribed form, Registrar General of Company uh, will enter the particular of the company in, in on the register because there is a company register. So he will enter the uh, name of the com particular company in the register, assign a unique number in its company number. So each and every company, uh, you all may know about it. Uh, I think I need not to much explain that. The each and every company has the company number. There is a number, unique number for a company. So once you have give the, uh, this document, they will enter the company name in the register and assign a unique number, its company number and issue a certificate of incorporation in the prescribed form. Who will do all these things? The Registrar General of Company. And then certificate of incorporation is uh, conclusive evidence that all requirement of incorporation have been completed. And the company has been incorporated on the particular specific date. So once they <coughs> register and assign the, num assign the number and give the uh, give a certificate of incorporation to the uh, person, the people, the uh, people those who apply for the company, register the company, 
and that certificate confirm that the particular company has been incorporated in that particular uh, date and certificate of incorporation specifies the name and number of the company the date of incorporation whether a limited company and in unlimited company or company limited by guarantee whether a private company whether an offshore company all sort of details will be uh, included in that particular certificate of incorporation and then company's name uh, actually, uh, this is uh, this is about when I, I I have already told you that when when you have wanted to form a company or any person wanted to form a company, first they will say that to check their names. The first condition is that name should not be identical. And when they are okay, once they either identify the name, ABC uh, let's example ABC company, and then when they are putting that the, the when they are they are they are displaying that name that name should have some condition the first one is if it is the limited company other than the listed company the word limited or ltd should be at end of the its name for example if it is the uh, no, abc trading then AC, abc trading limited it should be abc trading limited and if it is the ABC trading is a private company, then what they have to do is they have to put a PVT word PVT or private within bracket. So what they have to do is ABC trading private limited. They have to PVT limited in the in their name. And the third one is if it is the publicly limited public limited company or by the abbreviation. PLC. For example, if it is a listed company, it is a limited company and listed company, listed in the sense, listed in the Columbus Stock Exchange, then that company name should be PLC. So it is one of the general idea when a company name in with a PLC, you will can get an idea that company is listed with uh, the listed with the uh, Columbus Stock Exchange. So uh, these are the three general uh, general condition on displaying the uh, their name. So uh, displaying their name, company name for the public. No company will be registered by name which is uh, identical to an existing company or register overseas company. Contain the word Chamber of Commerce unless permitted and is register in a register or registers opinion misleading. Okay, and there are some other uh, the the other condition as well for the when they are selecting the name. First one is president, presidential or similar that suggests patron of the president. Patronage of the president and government or government department, then they can't uh, follow the. They can't register that name. And municipal and incorporate or other cooperative or society and national state and Sri Lanka or similar words that suggest any connections with the government or any government department, then they can register those uh, names into the. Uh, in the in as a as a company name for example abc president company or abc presidential company then they can't register that particular name as a company name a name changed by special resolution is permitted with prior written approval of the register uh, so what about single sorry yeah go ahead yeah, uh, what about singers? Singers, uh, yeah, there are some exceptions, of course. I also interested uh, uh, when I'm teaching you all the uh, even uh, international bank, national word, national is there, no? Yes. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, that they have, uh, for example, the, uh, this uh, Communist Act in Sri Lanka, maybe 1982 is the, uh, the oldest act. 
before that uh, if the company is uh, incorporated or something uh, but uh, actually i i have to search for that um, i mean I'll, I'll i'll let you know the answer uh, the next class uh, but there are some exception even thank you sir. thank you very much yeah Kata national bank is exemption single sri lanka is exemption um, i'll just search and uh, let you know in the next class the thank name you, changed you, by special resolution is permitted with prior written approval of the register so here in this point you have to keep it mind if there is a name change there should be a special resolution the normal with a normal resolution it cannot be approved then you can ask the question what is the special resolution which we will uh, discuss later on uh, so if any name change they have to pass a special resolution and then with the prior written approval of the register uh, and uh, the company should be given public notice of incorporation by publishing its name company number and address of the register office within 30 days of the incorporation this is we can of course in the in the the newspaper you can see this uh, this this advertisements generally and change of the name published within 20 days of the change this change of the name of course uh, you can see even in the financial institution sometimes if the financial institution went wrong or uh, making losses and they restructure and uh, or they they merge with some other institution sometimes they change the name of the particular company uh, which uh, there are several instances we can see uh, they had some other name then uh, subsequently they change the name when they wanted to change the name they have to follow uh, these conditions and uh, these uh, company names the names of and the company number should be clearly stated in all business letters all notices and other publication all bills of exchange promissory notes endorsement and checks etc all invoices received and uh, letters of credit all other document issued or signed by the company identically uh, ident indicating a local obligation of other company logic legal obligation of other company and company c so in these places they have to mention the company name the name and the number of the company should be clearly display at the registered office then the, the uh, registered office they have to maintain they have to clearly display the name the company name and registered office name and number so uh, the before moving to the article of association if you will have any questions i can answer uh, otherwise I, i'll move into the article of association section yeah article of association is is one it is one of the most important document for a company basically that that document describe the powers duties and authorization of related to the a particular company businesses even a particular company it it, it is the document uh, explaining what are the businesses the particular company can be engaged whether the particular company can be borrow or uh, all sort of information are included in the article of association so the article of association for a company <coughs> provide objective of the company the companies are having generally the objective main objective and sub objectives so the article of association the document particular document has to maintain uh, has to mention the objective of the company and rights and obligation of the shareholders and management and administration of the company all sort of details will be clearly mentioned in the article of association actually we need not to much worried about this because uh, when there's an there's an annexation in the company act we are it is giving a, uh, a specimen article of association to be used by the uh, by the people when they incorporate the article of association but some people they alter that for that so to suit the, their businesses in that case only we saw that the all the directors has to sign all, all the initial shareholders has to sign the mo model artic articles given in the first schedule of the act and apply for any company 
if no separate article exist or is a company limited by guarantee an article bind the company and its shareholders as if there were a contract between company and its shareholders okay this article of association explain the the contract between the or terms and condition between the shareholders and the company and particularly all money payable by the any shareholder to the company under the articles is a debt due from the shareholder to company company by the special resolution alters its article and it shall give notice of such resolution to the registrar within 10 working days so actually uh, the last point you have to keep in mind the company can be by passing the special resolution they can alter the article of association and if they once they if they alter the article of association what they have to do is they have to inform to the registrar of company within 10 working days these are some act of course there is nothing much to uh, explain or anything these are uh, you can just uh, read and get the idea and contents of the model articles articles uh, uh, it it has been mentioned first one is charges with related to charges issues calls uh, distribution and charge register uh, charge certificate transfer and transmission of charges those are information and shareholders meeting information rules notices method of uh, holding meetings quorum chairperson voting proxies minutes agm and etc has to be mentioned in the shareholders meeting and then appointment and removal powers duties meeting procedures chairperson notice method quorum voting minutes resolution secretary etc has to be mentioned in the article of issue these are the things generally uh, so actually for a exam point of view you have to keep in mind if you, what are the things has to be included in the article of association you can say it's about the char, uh, about the charge and shareholders meeting and directors and secretary about the directors and secretary and audit and uh, accounts and audit and liquidation and removal from the register and miscellaneous item will be included in the article of association uh, if you wanted to ask anything particularly in this uh, list Uh, you can just ask from me i can explain but other than that it is it is a direct for example if it is accounts and audit maintaining accounts appoint the auditor uh, transmitting finance statement and all it's a it's a general meaningful uh, things has to be included a uh, shareholder of a uh, company uh, before going to that uh, uh, if you have any any doubt or anything i can just clarify okay uh, i think uh, with this i am going to summarize the today's class and uh, the the next saturday i will i will just uh, touch on this because if i start the shareholders of a company it may take some time i i, I think i can't finish it oh wait we need to one two three no i can't finish it i will i will i will uh, uh, start in the next class this uh, shareholders of company so uh, before going to that i just summarize what we have studied actually we have studied first about uh, introduction to the financial uh, first we have given some introduction to the Uh, financial system and we saw that there are four components in the financial system finance institution financial market finance infrastructure and financial regulators then we have seen about uh, some uh, key function of the finance institutions and then important roles or importance of the finance institutions and then we have just this slide is keep in mind this slide is important just may uh, now we have see, uh, discuss about the difference from the uh, finance institution to other business entities what are the main differences the main difference is the uh, the finance institutions are running with the depositors money but other finance businesses are mainly running with the uh, 
shareholders money so that is and then financial institution have, uh, running with a customer confident other institution is not that much so there are stringent rules and regulations for the finance institution we have discussed about it then incorporation of companies we have seen some uh, legal matters statutory incorporation type of companies and private company requirement and then company limited uh, limited by guarantees and offshore company overseas company and then incorporating the company requirement and all then company names and they are what are the conditions related to the several condition we have discussed about it and then article of association we have discussed about it and we said that what are the things included in the article of association and now uh, we i think uh, by with this i am going to uh, finish this today's uh, class uh, if you have any question you can ask otherwise i can any questions related to today's class okay if you don't have any questions i i'll uh, wind up the class with this so we will meet uh, uh, next saturday at the same time 10:30 yeah. and uh, where i will take through yeah right you wanted to ask any, any questions or okay so i'll i'll just uh, um, Sir, so with regard to this uh, company, uh, company, company, yes, go ahead. Hello. Yeah, with regard to this uh, companies, uh, several companies that we uh, discussed, uh, uh, what are the areas that are mostly tested in this exam, sir? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, that's what I, I have already explained you that. In this section, uh, these companies act. Of course, there, there are rare questions in the, these sections. But the main one is today's one. You can just uh, the first one. You have to keep it in the exam point of view. Based on the past paper question, you have to keep the uh, keep in mind what is the difference between the uh, financial institution other companies. And there are one or two possible uh, the questions for two marks question in the question one. Uh, coming but generally there is no any structural question in the past paper with related to this act so you had the, 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 the okay, exam, sir. thank you very much yeah exam point of view just keep it a, the general idea because the, the the structural questions are coming from corporate governance risk complaints uh, audit and financial accounts uh, those are the areas mainly we will cover later on but this is uh, you can uh, you can expect one or two questions at the at the, at the question one for one or two marks maximum four marks thank you sir thank you for the clarification thank you okay uh, that's a, that, that's the thing actually in the, the the purpose of the uh, the studies is get the knowledge as well as pass the exam so we have to keep the uh, strike the balance between those two uh, okay, uh, with that, uh, I, I'll just wind up this class. Uh, we will meet on uh, next Saturday at the same time. Then, thank you so much.